Hello everyone, my name is Johannes Soikeli and I'm a flight control engineer at Pipistrel Vertical Solutions and I was part of a Unifier 19 project to study the flight dynamics and flight controls of the Unifier 19 vehicle. In short, this Unifier 19 project is a conceptual study of a 19-seater hydrogen-powered uh, aircraft uh, with uh, distributed electric propulsion. As part of the project, we developed the flight dynamic simulator and control laws. Now, towards the end of this project, we would like to invite everybody to, to develop their control laws, and we hope that this simulator could serve as a, a go-to simulator when it comes to, to depth vehicles. There's some more information about the project uh, here, about the vehicle it, itself, and this project has been part of the Clean Sky joint undertaking. A couple of the highlights of this simulator is that firstly, it's a full non-linear six degrees of freedom simulator. Then uh, secondly, it contains all the relevant system models, so electric engine models, uh, actuator models, and relatively simple landing gear model. Then also the aerodynamic model captures the aeropropulsive interactions, so of course the blown effect, but also the blown effect interacting with the flaps and the control surfaces. So the aerodynamic model is actually quite uh, detailed. And then this aerodynamic uh, data is also validated against high fidelity CFT. And then uh, there's all the necessary I.O. interfaces. So we have an interface with the joystick and then also interface to explain 11 to allow for nice visualization of the simulations. Then a very nice part is that this simulator comes with a very nice high fidelity explain 11 model in which all the propellers work, control surfaces work, landing gears. Uh, work so you can nicely visualize them your simulations in explain 11. Then this model fully supports rapid accelerator which is nice that then it runs relatively fast even on mediocre computers and usually there's no issues whatsoever keeping it running on real time and, and very smoothly. So the easiest way to start this is, of course, to download uh, the project as a zip file. And after it is downloaded, uh, the model also comes with a quite uh, detailed uh, documentation describing the aerodynamic uh, uh, model, the aerodynamic interpolation, then also the, the model itself, and then also the system model. So the the distributed electric propulsion model, the HTU, which is horizontal thrust unit, so in this case the pusher propeller uh, model. This model should run out of the box, but it uses two external uh, libraries. Uh, so mainly here, if we navigate to the model folder, in the Simulink, uh, Simulink model folder, we have two add-ons. And one of the add-ons is a joystick and another is a pacer. Maybe firstly starting with the pacer, its job is to keep the simulation running on real time. Uh, this was not developed part of this project, uh, but uh, is taken from this very nice project in file exchange. And why we didn't use the standard Simulink pacer is that Simply the standard pacer doesn't support rapid accelerator, but uh, this, uh, uh, this, this uh, one does. Uh, then the other one is a joystick. Again, this is something that we developed part of this project. Uh, and again, we have the same problem that the standard uh, Simulink joystick does not support rapid accelerator. So we developed uh, a S function that, that does. They should work out of the, the box uh, on your computer, but anyway, maybe they don't. So in this case, uh, I'll show you here how to recompile them for your computer. So firstly, if we navigate into this Pacer folder, and we simply need to run uh, these three uh, commands to compile all of these C, uh, C files here. And then after that is complete, 
just navigating to the joystick folder and similarly uh, compiling the joystick folder. Then everything starts uh, with this model from the unifier load file and this file loads all the aerodynamic data and all the initial conditions to the workspace. And after this, one can, one can run the model. Now, if uh, one wants to visualize uh, the simulations with X-Plane 11, there's a couple of steps that need to be done. Firstly, in this uh, unifier folder, here on X-Plane 11 is a unifier X-Plane model. And this model needs to be moved here into extra aircraft in the X-Plane installation folder. So, of course, you need to have an X-Plane to, to make this work. And here copying just the unifier here in the X-Plane. Then we can launch the X-Plane itself uh, and take a new flight. And uh, just one thing actually before starting. So the X-Plane communication from the Simulink happens via UDB a data packet that we, we wrote as part of this project. And this UDP sends this data back on your local IP address, so 127.0.0.1. But one should just make, uh, I mean, this should work out of the box, but ju just, just to know how this works is that uh, we are sending on the 49,000 port. And this is indeed port that then uh, explain is listening to. And then this way, the data packets that we sent here, so the aircraft position, but also the control surface deflections and the propeller uh, state are then received on X-Plane. So now when that's all checked, we can just launch the, the Unifier 90 model. And now after the loading is completed, we see that the Unifier aircraft loaded. And just to know, when you load it for the first time without running Simulinks, now the X-Plane 11 Flight Dynamics engine is active. And But now when we run our Simulink model, it starts to send to X-Plane uh, data packages and we see that now the aircraft uh, uh, is receiving the packages and essentially the Flight Dynamics is now handled by Simulink. Now, of course, this simulation is maybe a little bit sluggish because we run it on the normal simulation. Of course, we have now all the Simulink features fully available, but when we run it in rapid accelerator, so fully compiling the model, the simulation becomes very, very fluent. And now we see that it's running in rapid accelerator mode with four workers and the simulation is very, very smooth. Uh, probably it doesn't convey through the video, so I think the frame rate on the video is a bit low. But anyway, that's a very nice feature for running real-time simulations with joystick and control loss to, to have it uh, running very smoothly on real-time with simulation. Now, maybe giving a short overview of the model itself. So, maybe starting from the left, the stick input is where the, the S function for reading the joystick uh, happens. And here, all the joystick current, we, we read the four axes and 12 buttons on the joystick. And here, this device ID usually is zero, but uh, it could be also one if you connect your joystick uh, you can try zero or one uh, usually either or of those uh, will get the joystick to work then here in the pacer is the is the files from file exchange so here is the soft uh, real-time uh, engine to keep it running on real time then on the fcc here is now empty space where we invite you to develop your control loss and additionally here also the plane can be flown in fully manual mode for testing and experimenting then 
The system model itself is here on the C7A high aspect ratio wing. Here we have aerodynamic model, the subsystem models, and the equations of motion and some environment models. Then the X-plane visuals is where the communication with the X-plane uh, 11 happens. And here we send, uh, set all the data refs in the X-plane 11 to visualize the control surfaces and also the propellers. And here with this VAHX uh, packet, we visualize the orientation and the position of the aircraft. And then finally, the sensor scope just takes uh, values uh, and outputs them in one sensor bus. So I think this completes this short walkthrough and how to set up the simulations. If there's any questions, you can leave them on the GitHub uh, page. Thank you very much.